With one incredible run, he takes out 200 yards of line in a matter of seconds, and he's still pulling hard. With 300 yards of line out, I'm starting to find myself in a lot of trouble. He's out in the current and heading south. If I can't stop him in his tracks right now, he'll cut me off on the rocks when he goes around the point. He's calling the tune now, and I'm going to have to do some fancy running to keep up with him. In a situation like this, the gaff man only gets one chance, and Joe makes it a good one. This is the fish we were after, a 45 pound Spaniard. When it's all over, you wonder how you manage to run over rocks like these and fight a fish at the same time. Maybe it's adrenaline-powered flight. When there's a big fish on the other end of that line, I'm sure my feet never touch the ground. This was the look of the Australian angler in October 75. Ron talked about the release of these films for ABC television. My goodness, what a panic they caused around the fishing clubs and things because guys were seeing the things that were happening to them every day in boats and they were never able to fully explain to their wives and their girlfriends and their families and things. And that's what we were able to do with these films. I always think of Spaniards as being the wolves of the sea. The jaws are very long and full of razor sharp teeth. They can cut a big mullet in half with a single bite. We use a short wire trace to the lure and then 15 feet of double line above that. And as you can see, every inch of that trace is absolutely necessary. This is the last thing a lot of bait fish ever see, and this fish almost had our camera for dessert. These northern headlands may be prolific fish producers, but they're also incredibly difficult spots to get into. On this headland, you only catch as much as you can carry over a two mile track that was specifically designed for mountain goats. I've heard it said that you pay for every pound of mackerel with a pound of sweat, and you'd better believe it's true. To fish mackerel from the rocks, you need to be half fisherman, half pack horse. Now it's on again. The beginning of a fight that might finish in seconds, or it might go on for so many hours that Phil could end up wishing he were anywhere else in the world except on this particular boat, on this particular day, fighting a fish that doesn't know when to quit. There's no way of knowing in advance where it's going to take you. You just fight as hard as you can, for as long as you can, and hope that's enough to bring you out on top. With the sort of luck he's had in the past, you have to wonder what's going through Philip's mind at a time like this. To complicate things, Phil has hooked the fish on 80 pound tackle and the rod is a very hard 80. Far too much rod to be fighting standing for any length of time. At the end of the first hour, the fish is still wide and deep, running whenever he wants to, and Philip has hit the wall. It's time for a fighting chair. Philip battles on into the second hour of the fight and then on past that again. It doesn't end with spectacular leaps. It finishes tough, just like the rest of the fight. Fair hooked, but with a line tucked under a pectoral, the fish is almost impossible to lead. He wants to stay down and time after time he comes close to the surface only to slip back under the prop and rudder where he's always within an inch of breaking free. Each time he does that, Philip dies inside, 
just one more time. Then, one last pass, and it's finished. Steve gets his first touch of the wire, and it's done. There's hardly a kick left in the fish, or in Philip either for that matter. The fight went very close to a draw, a classic confrontation between man and a great wild fish. Philip has his fish at last, the one he wanted so much. A 360 pound blue marlin, a great climax to an extraordinary fishing trip. The long wait had paid off. Schools of mackerel tuna began to ripple the surface and the big fellows were right behind them. From the time that line came tight, we knew we had the system sorted out at last. The combination of the low kidney harness and super fast taper rod, much shorter than usual, worked perfectly. And freestanding to fight a big fish was more comfortable than working from a game chair in a big cruiser. My first shark at Port Stephens had been one of the worst fishing experiences of my life, and this was one of the best. Inside of 10 minutes, Wayne was soaking the wiring gloves to soften them, and two minutes later, he had the trace. He looks like one very quiet fish, but he's just catching his breath, and Wayne gets stretched again. You can always pick a good wire man in a crowd. He's the only fellow with arms 12 feet long. A shark has armour-plated skin, and if you don't place the point of that gaff exactly right, he'll roll clean out of it every time. This is another way to get a gaff into a shark. Most people who use this method are called stumpy. Harrison feels the weight of the fish and calls him for around 20 kilos. This won't take long. A little time passes and that fish seems to be growing down there. Now he could be 40 or more and worth a harness. Even in an exceptionally stable boat like this big cat, every part of the angler's body is working. All that leverage up top as the arms and shoulders strain against the weight and power of the fish, and below, the legs constantly fight for balance to brace the upper body. It can be brutal, hard work, even for a very strong man. A lot of time has slipped by and it's now 45 minutes since the hookup. They don't guess the weight anymore. There's no doubt now that the fish is well over 45 kilos, the old magic 100 pound mark. The second phase of a struggle like this is where the fight with a fish becomes secondary to the fight to control your own pain and exhaustion. The name of the game is to endure, to simply last it out. After over an hour of brutal punishment both ways, a big flash of metallic colour shows down deep and at last he gives in and planes to the surface. What a magnificent fish. 73 kilos, 161 pounds of muscle and heart. Rod's total exhaustion is very real and when it comes to lifting the head of the fish, he just can't hack it. They swap ends, and in he comes. <laughs> 